Hey dudes, so I told us back again with the sixth installment of Dungeon Sets 101. My guides for how to get your character his or her classic dungeon set as efficiently as possible. So far, I've covered five sets. Devout, Valor, Shadowcraft, Magisters, and Beast Stalker. So since there's only four more to choose from, I felt like today I'd go with the set of my brother's favorite class, the Paladin. So, pick up your hammers, buff your party, and spam Flash of Light as we explore how to acquire the Light Forge armor. There are eight pieces to the Light Forge set, with set bonuses for equipping two, four, six, and eight pieces. Like most of the dungeon sets, the bonuses aren't really amazing considering the traditional role of the class, but for soloing, they're actually not too bad. Plus, the set looks pretty badass. To get started, here's a quick rundown of where to find each item. As you can see, you're going to have to run four different dungeons fully to complete this set. Strat Live, Strat Undead, Skull Immense, and Upper Blackrock Spire. Luckily, however, you've got a good chance of getting all of the BOE items along the way so you might not have to visit the auction house like some of the other classes will. But anyway, now that we know where to go, let's talk about how to get these items. There are four pieces of the set that drop in Stratholme. Two in Live, one in Undead, and one that drops from Trash in both. The Trash drop is the Belt, and it typically drops from Gargoyles in the Undead portion, and the humans in the live portion, in particular Crimson Gallants and Guardsmen. So you're pretty much guaranteed to see it drop at least once as you grind the two wings over and over for the other items. Let's start with Strat Live first. Not including that belt, the two pieces to aim for here are the gauntlets, which drop from Timmy the Cruel just outside the Scarlet Bastion, and the boots, which drop from Balmazar at the end of the dungeon. As usual, clear the dungeon until you get to the entrance of the Scarlet Bastion. To have a shot at the gloves, you'll need to spawn Timmy the Cruel. He's an optional boss that comes out only after all of the Scarlet enemies standing outside the entrance to the Bastion have been defeated, so be mindful of that. Also, keep in mind that he can spawn on either the left or the right side of the room, so I'd recommend finishing off the final enemy either up the stairs or somewhere in the middle. As a paladin, this fight is really easy. Just a tank and spank, really. Timmy hits hard though, so make sure he dies fast and hope for your gloves. Continue through the Bastion until the final boss. Balmazar drops the boots to the Light Forge set, and he's a tricky boss to be sure. This fight starts off as a simple tank and spank against Grand Crusader Dathraham. At around 50% HP though, he turns into his true Dreadlord form, complete with mind controls, fears, and sleeps. As a paladin, cleanse any and every debuff that comes up, and do your best not to die, especially if you're healing. When he falls, pray to RN Jesus for your boots, then head over to the undead side. Other than the belt, there's really only one piece of the set that you can acquire in Stratholme Undead, the leg plates from Baron Rivendare. This fight will vary depending on what role you're playing as a paladin, but assuming that you're healing like a good pally should, you should stand as far away as possible, out of range of the ticking AoE aura. When skeletons spawn, consider swapping to concentration aura to avoid pushback on your spells. When the Baron falls, pick up your new swagtastic leg plates. Or, if he doesn't drop them, run the whole dungeon again. Next up is Skull Immense. There are two pieces of the set that you can get here. The Bracers and the Helm, from Lord Alexei Barov and the Trash Mobs in his room, and Dark Master Gandling, respectively. So, run the dungeon as normal until you get to the final large chamber with six small rooms around it. 
Lord Alexei Berov is downstairs, directly in front of the hallway you entered from. Defeat the two trash mobs first, and then get ready for a tough fight. As a paladin, you'll need to use Turn Undead on one of the guards while everyone focuses either on the boss or on the other ad first. Depending on your strategy, you may need to reapply this crowd control mid-fight, so keep an eye out for it when it breaks. Assuming you're healing, you should stand as far away as possible to avoid his pulsing AoE, Unholy Aura. Also, ask your mage or druid, if you have one, to decurse the tank in order to properly keep him alive. If you don't have someone who can decurse, be ready to spam the hell out of Flash of Light to keep him alive. Good luck getting your bracers, but remember, you can always buy them from the auction house too. After all six rooms are cleared, Darkmaster Gandling will spawn. Just like all the other classes, be mindful of the teleport, especially if you're the healer. When teleported, make use of Turn Undead and Exorcism to kill the non-elite skeletons as quickly and safely as possible. As a paladin, that's really all there is to this fight. So good luck getting your helm. The final two set pieces, both by non pickup items, drop from bosses in Upper Black Rock Spire. The Spalders drop from the Beast, and the Breastplate drops, of course, from General Dracosath at the end of the run. Go through the dungeon as normal until you get to the large room housing the Core Hound. Be sure to clear out any and all nearby mobs, including the assassins that lurk around inside his space. As a paladin, this fight is pretty simple, if you're healing anyway. Stand at max range to avoid the fear, and mind your positioning for the charge. If you're tanking, keep your back to the wall to avoid knockbacks. And if you're DPSing as a paladin, you're doing something wrong. Just saying. Anyway, grab your shoulders and head over to the final room of the dungeon to face the general. In order to get your chest and complete your set, you'll need to kill General Dracosath. As a paladin, this fight is pretty simple. The hunter pulls the boss away, your group takes out the two adds, and then everyone burns the boss when he comes back. As a healer, be wary of the boss when he returns, as you might get healing aggro. Make sure to keep the tank up, especially during the conflagration, and you should be good to go. If you're tanking this boss, good luck picking him up when he comes back. Here's hoping you get your chest. And there you have it. All in all, the Lightforge armor it really isn't that difficult to obtain, in my opinion. There's no need to run LBRS, and all of the BOE pieces can easily be picked up while you focus on the Binom pickup pieces. As always, you can grab the Bracer's gloves and belt from the auction house if you somehow missed out. But I doubt that'll happen, unless you get really, really lucky with the BOP drops, and don't get a chance to see BOEs. Anyway, that's it for today. If you liked this guide or found it useful, let me know by leaving a comment down below. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. As always, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and support me on Patreon if you're into that sort of thing, and would like updates, perks, and the like. But yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and as always, take it easy.